picture this. You're in the car trying to get somewhere. Perhaps you're running a little late, or maybe you're lucky enough to be running right on time. But then, someone who is driving 10 miles below the speed limit cuts you off. And on top of that, they then continuously brake and swerve, and there is no opportunity to get around them. Then you approach a yield sign. So, so now, then you approach a yield sign. There are absolutely no cars coming, but the slow driver in front of you completely stops. So now, not only are you running late, but you are really frustrated. How could this driver possibly have a valid license? And then you see it. As you glance at the driver in front of you, you notice that they have white hair, glasses, and even a handicap placard hanging from their mirror. And now it all makes sense. This exact event happened to me not too long ago. I have experienced firsthand the irritation that elderly drivers can cause. This situation is one of many examples that prove why elderly people 62 and over should be required to retake their driver's test regularly. First, let me explain why I believe elderly people can be considered dangerous on the road. Caring.com estimated that 14 million Americans aged 18 to 64 were involved in accidents caused by drivers aged 65 and over during the year 2015, which is a scary number that was said to increase in the following years. The Los Angeles Times conducted a study on the average number of accidents caused by Toyota cars based on the age of each car's driver. Here are the results. As you can see, the average number of accidents made by adults between the ages of 60 and 80 far exceed the rest of the groups. Another study done by nonprofit RAND Corporation shows a different aspect by comparing drivers under the age of 25 and over the age of 65 to drivers between those two ages. Here are the results. While it does show that elderly drivers are less risky and less frequently on the roads, it does, shows that, sh does show that they pose a 573% greater threat of causing or receiving a fatal injury than the average middle-aged adult. This is likely because senior citizens' reaction times are slower, their motor skills have deteriorated, and their physical health is declining. Now let me connect these statistics to real-life situations. Some of the worst traffic accidents to occur in the history of our country were caused by senior citizens. As I proceed to describe examples, keep in mind that each driver you're going to hear about held a valid driver's license. On July 16, 2003, an 86-year-old man named George Russell Weller lost control of his 1992 Buick LeSabre and drove it through a crowd at Santa Monica Farmer's Market, reaching speeds between 40 and 60 miles per hour. Though it lasted less than a minute, the outcome was fatal. Ten people were killed, including a married couple, a three-year-old child, and a seven-month-old baby, and 63 people suffered injuries. In this case, the driver confused his gas pedal and his brake pedal. As he increased the pressure he applied to the gas pedal, he simply believed he was pressing a failing brake pedal. The only reason his car ever came to a stop was because he hit multiple parked cars. Otherwise, he would have continued to accelerate and the damage would have been worse. Another severe case occurred in 2012. At nearly 101 years old, Preston Carter put his Cadillac in reverse and hit 11 people, which included nine children near a Los Angeles elementary school. As bystanders banged on his windows and yelled, he continued to pin children under his car. One child was left in critical condition, and the others were treated at the hospital. This driver claimed that his brakes had failed, but upon further investigation, he too had mistaken his gas pedal for his brake. While these occurrences caused a national debate about elderly people behind the wheel, the laws during these incidents regarding traffic safety as it correlates to age are the exact same today. And the minimal laws that are in place are still allowing a consistent number of accidents. Four weeks ago, a 75-year-old man in Florida pulled out in front of a pickup truck on the highway. The driver was hit and killed. On the same day of this accident in Arizona, a car driven by a 93-year-old man crashed through a wall and into a pond. Both he and his 93-year-old wife were killed. Four days ago, an 80-year-old man in Washington crashed his car into a tree, leaving himself in, ser in serious condition and killing his 72-year-old and 83-year-old passengers. Three days ago, a 68-year-old man in Massachusetts died after driving his car into oncoming traffic and hitting multiple cars. These accidents could have been prevented had these drivers been retested on their driving skills. That is why I propose they should be required to do so. But why would I suggest at the age 62? 62 years old is the earliest age that you can be begin receiving Social Security retirement benefits. That means that the government recognizes this age as the one in which doing everyday things, such as working, is no longer optimal, due to the decline in health that begins to universally ensue. 
This is sensible because wrecks begin to increase when people reach their early 60s. That is why I believe 62 is the most reasonable, most fair, and most fit age to begin retesting citizens' driving abilities. The extreme statistics regarding crashes and threats posed by older drivers are rather compelling, and the graphic events that take place on the road caused by senior drivers are fairly disturbing. These two things support why the government considers someone of age 62 to be less suitable to complete everyday activities. Because of these evidences, elderly citizens in the United States should be required to retake their driver's test beginning at age 62 and regularly after that. Thank you.